Welcome to India Today's So South. I am Mahesh Chitnis. Karnataka witnessed hectic political developments on Saturday and is expected to continue for the next few days as Governor Thawarchan Gehlot has given permission to prosecute Chief Minister Sidramaya in the Mysuru Urban Development Land Allotment case. The Congress and the Cabinet stood behind the CM and said that there is no question of CM Sidramaya's resignation. Meanwhile, Sidramaya has demanded Governor's resignation, claiming conspiracy against him and the governor acting on behalf of the central government. Now, the complainants, who are the private persons, are planning to approach the court seeking directions to begin the investigation. To discuss the political ramifications of the governor's sanction and more, I am joined in by senior journalist and political analyst Ram Krishna Upadhyay. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. So, firstly, how do you see the entire saga? Will there be any political changes in the state? Uh, well, Mahesh, uh, now that uh, the governor, Mr. Gehlot, has given some kind of a permission to either uh, investigate or prosecute the chief minister, Mr. Sidramaya, uh, you know, things are going to move very, very rapidly. Because I think uh, Mr. Sidramaya was under a lot of pressure until now, and then he was uh, waiting for what kind of a decision the governor will take. Uh, in fact, his cabinet has passed resolutions saying that the governor does not have the powers to prosecute him and he should not uh, make this misadventure. Uh, they have even uh, given a detailed note about, I think, 56 pages note to the governor saying that, uh, you know, he doesn't have the powers and he should not go ahead and it will be, he will be politicizing the whole issue by going ahead. But then governor in his order yesterday has made it very, very clear that he has all the powers to do what he has done now. First of all, let's look at what he has done. I think there is some confusion on whether the governor has given permission for uh, merely investigation or the prosecution. Let me look at it from different points of view because there are some people are saying it's only for investigation now and then the prosecution will come later. Because he has invoked section 17A of the uh, uh, you know uh, the, the 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 corruption act. So 17. that being the case, seventeen uh, A of the corruption act. Yeah. So, so that being the case, you know that very clearly says it is for investigation. Mm. So you know I quote from his uh, uh, communication. He says, mm. in quote, it is very necessary that a neutral, objective, and non-partisan investigation should be conducted under Section 17A of the Prevention of Corruption Act. Mm -hmm. This is what his order says. <clears throat> if you are to allow for prosecution simultaneously, uh, some legal experts are saying he would have invoked even Section 19 of the same act. So mm -hmm. that, they say, has not done so far. But then other point of view is this automatically, you know, that will come to the picture. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, you know, the fact that the governor has intervened and allowed you know, Chief Minister to be made and accused is itself a very, very big, uh, uh, you know, development in Karnataka. And he has done that, you know, through three interlocutors. I mean, three private people, you know, were filed the uh, petitions in front of him. So now it will be up to them to approach the Lokayukta because uh, the Prevention of Corruption Act, you know, is handled by the Lokayukta, not the regular police. So already Mr. Abraham has filed a complaint with the Lokaita police and he has done so on July 18th in Mysore and it's automatically the police will have to now file an FIR. FIR against the accused including the chief minister, his wife, uh, Ms. Parvati and we don't know who else will be included. So once the FIR is issued and the notices are given, the process begins. So that is what the chief minister and the entire Congress government is afraid of. Now we'll have to see how they go about it. Mm. So how do you see the Sidramaya's position now? Even though the cabinet, the Congress high command are projecting a picture that, uh, you know, they all are behind him. Well, you see, that is what happens initially. You see, I mean, you know, you, you will fight against the whole system and then you say, no, no, nothing can be done. Uh, you know, I'm beyond all this. I've not done nothing wrong. Is that there is no possibility of being by you know, prosecuted and all that. There's a kind of stand will take. And even his police have stood by him, including Mr. Shukumar, 
first mm -hmm. deputy chief minister, who is now a contender for the chief minister's post. And he too has uh, come out openly saying that what the governor is doing is not right, and we will all stand by the chief minister. So even the Congress high commander said, you know, there's no, no question of asking Mr. Sidharama to step down and all that. See, these are initial reactions. I mean, I find that, you know, in cases like this, this is how the whole scenario begins. Mm. So there will be people who will say, no, 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 nothing of the kind. We will not allow the prosecution to go ahead. So what is now going to happen is Mr. Sidramaya has, I think, going to uh, you know engage the best of lawyers to file in the high court a petition to quash the permission given by the government which is probably going to come up on Monday. And I heard Mr. Kapil Sibyl and Mr. Sigvi uh, will be coming and, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the, the best of the advocates in the country, they mm. will be uh, before the high court, you know, challenging the decision taken by the governor. Mm. So it will be interesting to see what stand they will take, because there are multiple cases earlier, including a, a Supreme Court judgment, a, a division bench judgment, which has upheld the power of the governor to, you know, give the permission. So mm -hmm. we'll have to see what, uh, you know, arguments they come up with and how, how will they be able to convince the high, the high court that the action taken by the governor is not in the best interest of the state and he doesn't have the powers to do it. Mm -hmm. So despite, you know, projecting a picture that all are one, uh, I think there is a section of state Congress leaders who are definitely happy with the developments are, and waiting for, you know, right moment to, you know, uh, get their due or, uh, you know, replace CM Sidrame. How do you see this? You see, these are the undercurrents we'll have to watch out for. Mm. Uh, because as we have known, I mean, as journalists, we have seen uh, how things are moving within the Congress party. Uh, Mr. Shukumar has already made his claim very, very publicly that, you know, he should also be given a chance to become the chief minister. In fact, just about a couple of months ago, uh, we mm -hmm. remember that at some public meeting, he got one of the, uh, you know, Kaliga CS to openly ask the chief minister to vacate, to vacate the seat of the chief minister. Mm -hmm. He said, you have been uh, chief minister for, you know, almost you know, six and a half, seven years now. It's time that you allowed uh, Shukumar also to become uh, the chief minister. So it was in a meeting where both the chief minister and the deputy chief minister were present. And it is very, very embarrassing for Mr. Siddharamaya uh, to hear that in a public meeting attended by some three, four thousand people. So as soon as he came out of the meeting, the you know, the journalists were, uh, you know, bombarded questions, uh, mm. Siddharamaya, and he said, well, well, we are a party run by the high command. These mm. are issues which should be decided by the high command. And you could see that he was very much irritated you know, mm. by the kind of questions that are being raised and the fact that the Swamiji had openly asked for him to vacate the seat. So this has been going on for quite some time now. And this, you know, now incident where Mr. Sidharamaya, for the first time in his political career, is mm. facing this kind of situation where any FIR against the chief minister will be seen as a very serious issue. And it will not be easy for him to continue as, a, you know, the chief minister I mean, uh, people are quoting the case of uh, Kejriwal. I mean, he has even mm. gone to jail uh, for more than six months now, I and mean, still he continues as a chief minister. Uh, but that's a different scenario. I mean, uh, you know, AAP is a one-man party. So he's mm. the whole and soul of the party, and uh, um, there are no challenges. He doesn't have any challenges within the party, and that's the reason why he's able to continue there. Whereas in Karnataka, we have seen that there are multiple players who are looking at the chief minister's post, and if Sidharamaya seem to be vulnerable, and I think this is the time when others will stake the claim. Mm. So now coming back to the you know this particular Moda case, the Congress has accused go the governor of you know giving the sanction illegally without following the set prescribed by the center, and also yeah, the Congress has been maintaining maintaining that even though there are several cases pending you know in front of uh, the governor like uh, S D Kumaraswamy and B J P leader Shashikala Jolle. Uh, the governor has acted in a lightning speed, you know, in this particular case. How do you see this? <laughs> see, this, uh, I don't know about the cases against the Nirani or Jolle and all those. I mean, I, I have to study what those cases are and how serious they are and whether there is a prevention of corruption case or something else. 
So here is the case of Prevention of Corruption Act where a public servant has to be held accountable. Mm. And Siddharamaya being the chief minister of the state and, you know, Primafasi going by what the governor himself says, that there is something in the uh, act, a MUDA act, which uh, you know has to be looked into. And if uh, one piece of land somewhere, uh, you know, 3.16 acres or whatever, for that you give 14 sites, you know, in prime locality, which is not a normal thing. You know, it's not a normal thing. And it has been estimated that it uh, costs anywhere between 55 to uh, 60 odd crores. So if that is the kind of money, you know, for the value of that uh, site, uh, how did he get it? I mean, mm. has he used his influence? Of course, he has, in his defense, he has said all this was done during the BJP government time and he was not the chief minister at the time. So but then it doesn't hold water because he was at one point or the other. He has been an MLA, he also been the leader of the opposition. Of course, he was the leader of the opposition when this decision to Grand 14 sites were taken by, you know, uh, the Moda and the BJP was in power at the state. But then his son, of being an MLA of Mysore, was also a member of Moda. So, mm. you know, he would have been part of the decision-making body. So mm. with all this, you see, it is for the court to look at whether he has used his position power to, you know, get uh, unreasonable, uh, you know, make unreasonable profit out of this. So if that is established, he will be, uh, you know, held guilty. Mm. So that's all it is. I mean, you know, you have to face the consequences of the action that you take. Mm. So also, you know, Congress has been, you know, uh, claiming that the uh, the governors in the uh, Congress ruled states are continuously targeting their, you know, the respective, uh, the chief ministers and the state government there. Uh, like in Tamil Nadu, Kerala. Now, we have seen that the uh, Karnataka governor, Thawas and Gelot, has been, you know, kind kind of, you know, well-to-go person so far and, and before the, this in, in incident of, you know, uh, prosecution happened. So how do you see this? Do you think really there is something behind or it's just the, uh, you know, the Congress making, you know, just playing the role of opposition uh, for the center? Well, the Congress should know that uh, you know they had been in power for sixty odd years out of uh, you know seventy five years of independent India, and they have done many things like this. But they were in power at the center and the states. We all know how the governors used to be the puppets of the central government. So the same uh, you know tactics are being continued by the BJP. So let's not mm. make a you know a, there's no virtue in politics, and BJP is uh, not a uh, avatar of a you know, different kind that they will uh, behave differently. So mm. what the Congress has done, now the BJP is also doing to the extent possible because now there are some restrictions because of certain, uh, you know, Supreme Court uh, judgments. Earlier we have seen how many state governments were dismissed at the whims and fancies of the central government. Mm. I mean, the, the DMK government has been dismissed at least three, four times at mm. the whims and fancies of the central government. So which is not the case now. They cannot mm. do it. So in the last 10 years of the Modi government, there was only one attempt at uh, not dismissing government and the, the Supreme Court restored it. Mm. So after that, you know, the BJP government has not dared to dismiss any state government. So uh, that has been the case uh, as far as uh, the... Of course, in every situation that you know Supreme Court cannot intervene, and we have seen that the governors are supposed to act to the eyes and ears of the central government and apart from being the eyes and ears, I think they also become the brain of the Supreme of the Central Government. So if the Central Government decides that you know we need to need the uh, non-BJP non governments a little bit, and they do it. And so this is one of those cases. So where I think uh, Sidramaya happens to be uh, now uh, when uh, BJP is at the power, at the center. Mm. For the past two to three months, you know, we have seen at least around two to three, you know, scams. First, it was Maharshi Valmiki scam. Now, the Moda scam. Even though, you know, by chance, the Congress High Command decides to replace uh, Sidramaya with uh, DK Kumar or somebody else, it will not be easy for the Congress High Command because we are we all know that uh, Sidramaya himself is the tallest leader of the uh, Ainda communities. Well, I think it will be very, very challenging, very, very challenging for the Congress High Command if at all they decide to replace uh, Mr. Siddharamaya. Uh, Mr. Siddharamaya is among the tallest leaders, as I said, 
uh, in in uh, in Karnataka, and the and the Congress High Command is also not as strong as it used to be. Mm. You know, earlier they could uh, just tell the uh, CMs to go, and you know they would pack up their bags and go. But now it is not so easy. We have seen how uh, Mr. Bangarappa was asked to go, and uh, though he protested, uh, finally he had to go. Uh, so like that uh, now, but uh, the high command also has become very weak, and it's not easy uh, for them to meddle with the, the you know the state level leaders, especially someone like Sidramaya. He's a very seasoned uh, politician, and he is still popular among the legislators, Congress legislators. Let's make no mistake that I think even now. He has a majority of MLAs backing him. So mm -hmm. when it comes to some kind of a uh, you know trial of strength within the legislature, he will win hands down against Shukumar or anybody else who will stand against him. Mm -hmm. So if at all, I mean, you know, it's a high command. I mean, there's also a possibility that if the FIR is filed and they may ask him to resign and then you know stand again as a you know for the chief minister, the legislature party will be elected. Mm. We have seen this kind of a thing happening when Mr. Ramakrishna Hegre was the chief minister. Yeah. He resigned a couple of times and then, you know, the legislators would say, no, 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 we, we can't do without you. Please, you know, we want to elect you again. And he has mm. been re-elected. So mm. that kind of a drama is also possible. We'll have to see how things move from now on. Also, Mr. Ramakrishna, lastly, uh, you know, the BJP's role will be will also be very crucial now. Uh, we are seeing that they have conducted uh, Padhyatar from Bangalore to Mysore regarding the Muda scam, but we are we have witnessed you know internal fighting within the BJP like uh, Basan Goda Party Yatnar, you know Pratap Sima not taking actively in the, in the Padhyatra. So how do you think the BJP's role will will be crucial, and uh, how do you think the BJP High Command might intervene and stop the infighting so that you know they can take the maximum advantage possible in this case? I think that's a different issue altogether. But uh, the fact of the matter is the BJP, uh, at least the majority of leaders have now got together, uh, yeah. you know, in making sure that uh, you know, Sidharami has put under a lot of pressure to resign. So to that extent, uh, I mean, they, they sense that, you know, they could come back to power. And that's what, uh, you know, the politics uh, does to politicians. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of internal uh, you know, differences within the BJP. And as we have seen, the Basaraj, Patil uh, Yatnal, or Mukhtar uh, Kiyoli, Ramesh Jakiyoli, they've all been uh, you know, openly challenging uh, Mr. Vijendra's uh, election as the state uh, BJP president. So internal uh, you know, issues are there with the BJP, but mm. they all come together when there's a the smell of you know, power. But mm. uh, I don't know whether the people of the state are ready for uh, you know, a BJP government for a game. I don't know. Mm. Because just about a year ago, they have thrown them out because they were corrupt. They mm. did not give a good administration. And that was the reason why Mr. Sidharame and the Congress came to power with an absolute majority. Mm. I don't think right now the people of Karnataka are ready for another BJP government now, if at all, you know, that help, uh, you know that uh, situation comes. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Ramakrishna, for joining us on this discussion. Well, now all eyes will be on the court decision on what order it would issue in the case. Uh, so we'll keep tracking the case very closely. Keep watching in the for more news and updates.